Chelsea against Manchester United in the fourth round of the Carabao Cup as the Blues search revenge for their 4 0 battering on the opening day of the season, where Frank Lampard hints at starts for some youngsters against an opponent that you should never ever underestimate, no matter how badly things are going for them. Hello there guys and welcome back to Blues TV for another preview of mine on this channel as Chelsea take on Manchester United in the fourth round of the Carabao Cup tomorrow evening on Wednesday evening at Stamford Bridge and I'm buzzing for it, absolutely buzzing for it, usually don't really care that much for the Carabao Cup, especially any, at any point before the semi-final but it's Manchester United and we already lost 4-0 to them this season so it is a big game, it is a big game to me, I hope it's a big game to the players and um, it's you know big game for the majority of the fans and um you know i'm really really looking forward to it of course if you are new to blues tv please be sure to subscribe that we massively appreciate it make sure you um smash the notification bell button as well so you you know get notifications whenever we do upload a video and also be sure to drop a like you know just go down below and drop a like that would be massively appreciated if you do enjoy our content and um yeah just a little disclaimer you might be able to tell from my voice already was a little bit ill <clears throat> for on, on the weekend you know for my burnley review but um you know not better, just my voice sounds a bit off, so that is why I do apologise for that. But now, no more waffling about, and let's just get into the preview. And of course, as always, starting it off by speaking on our opposition. And that, of course, is Manchester United. And they're a really, really weird one. They're currently 7th in the Premier League table, level on points, you know, with the teams down to 10th. So, with the likes of Sheffield United, <clears throat> Bournemouth and West Ham, 7 points behind ourselves. Chelsea, having scored just 13 goals in the 10 games so far, and mind you, Four of them came against us. So, you know, in nine games, they only scored nine goals, which really isn't a great turnaround for a club like Manchester United. And, you know, they had some dreadful results and performances, you know, in their run so far this season. Absolutely awful. But like I said, they beat us 4-0. Even if it was undeserved, they still beat us 4-0. Um, they won a better team against Liverpool two weeks ago um, for at least an hour of the game. Like I would personally have said so. You know, they were going to lap and continue the late equaliser. And they also beat Leicester. Okay, in that game, maybe Leicester kind of bottled it. But still, you know, they beat us. They got a draw against Liverpool and they beat Leicester. Um, you know, it doesn't really go with the, the other performances because they lost to Palace. They lost to West Ham. They lost to Newcastle. They drew with Southampton. Who, mind you, just got battered 9-0 by Leicester. And we beat them quite convincingly as well not too long ago. And even their Europa League campaign has been particularly good. I mean, they drew with AZ Alkmaar from Holland, of course. Scraped wins over Astana from Kazakhstan and Belgrade. Um, so really things aren't, aren't going that well and even to get to the fourth round of the Carabao Cup they had to beat League, uh, League One side Rochdale and even that they only managed on penalties after it ended 1-0 after 90 minutes and that was at Old Trafford it wasn't even an away game for them and still things are not are not great for them but you know even if their performances against Liverpool and Norwich on the weekend who they beat 3-1 Make it look like they're kind of a bit more back on track after a dreadful run before that. United are absolutely shocking at being the better team against the defensive opponent. But they're pretty decent, you know, so far at least. They're pretty decent at defending and at hitting their opponent on a break. As much as we laugh at them, Harry Maguire did improve them defensively. I'm sure Ole Gunnar Solskjaer had something to do with that as well to an extent. I don't know. Um, and Juan Bissaka as well, possibly. Uh, but Harry Maguire sure did make a difference and they're pretty good at that. But the main question still remains, what kind of team Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will actually field? As I mentioned in a previous video, I think it was the Burnley preview, um, he stated, Solskjaer did, um, after being drawn against us in the cup, that they'd play a lot of youngsters in their game. So let's see whether he stays true to that or not, because, you know, it obviously makes a difference whether they field a lot of 18 to 20 year olds or whether they you know come with their best side it's kind of pointless to speak about those danger men because none of them might play and we might see some youngsters that might surprise us like james garner or mason greenwood who who um you know if you're a united fan you've obviously heard of them if you follow football more rigor rigorously is that the word i'm not sure um it might be <laughs> you will have heard of them but not all of you will have and they're pretty decent players tactics and formation wise they usually go for a 4 2 3 1 um, at times a 4-3-3, only against Liverpool did they mix it up a bit and start with a 3-4-3 or 3-4-1-2. So it will be interesting to see whether they do that against us again. They didn't when we when they smashed us 4-0, but now they're in a different kind of you know situation as a club. We're in a much different situation to what we were in on the opening day of the season. So it wouldn't be the biggest surprise to me if they started with three at the back, especially because it worked pretty well for them against Liverpool. And are we the favourites? Personally, I'm not sure. I mean... Maybe we are, considering we are on the run of seven wins in a row. But like I said, if United are good at one thing this season, especially, it's sitting back, being defensive, and then hitting on the break. And no one should ever, ever underestimate Manchester United. Liverpool learned that. Liverpool learned that. United were in an awful position, awful position. Um, and Liverpool were that team, you know. And not many clubs, they really welcomed playing Liverpool at that point. Liverpool... 
you know, top of the top of the table, top of the league, Champions League, um, win and everything. Came to Old Trafford and they struggled. They really struggled. Only in the last few minutes of the game, they really kind of managed to put the pressure on that you know most people expected for the entirety of the game and at least get a draw from that. Um, yes, okay, I still don't think Manchester United's goal should have stood. That was a clear foul um, on Origi for me personally, but still, you know, United gave them a good game and like I said, we're the better team. So you should never ever underestimate United, and I hope none of you do ahead of the game tomorrow either. But to be honest, that was really it about Manchester United and now getting into Frank Lampard's pretty much press conference, which was again one of those press conferences where I just want to just chuck my phone at the wall while I'm watching um, the press conference on my phone because these journalists are just absolutely useless and just ask the most ridiculous questions. They asked about the Rugby World Cup and about VAR today, but they already asked me about the VAR situation after the Burnley game, of course, with the Hudson Lloyd dive and everything. Is it a dive? I might retract my statement from the live review a little bit. Still think it's a dive, but it's not as bad as I first thought it was. I didn't see the push on the back. Um, but let's get into Frank Lampard's premier flash conference. And um, he firstly hinted that this game might be an opportunity for players that haven't played all that much so far to, you know, just feature, I guess, regardless of their age. So that basically just says Pedro will play and there's a good chance that the likes of Billy Gilmer, possibly Mark Way as well, will feature as well. So we'll have to wait and see. He also confirmed that both N'Golo Kante and Antonio Rodrigo remain sidelined. Didn't, you know, give any updates on how long that will be, but... You know, of course, he did give that out of the Burnley game. So if you're not sure, watch that preview. I'll give you more information on that then. But we got absolutely no information on the fitness situation of Andreas Christensen and Ross Barkley. Of course, Christensen with the hamstring problem, Barkley with the ankle problem. And um, thanks, journalists. Useless as always, really, because that's kind of important information. To, as to what I was told, I very much doubted it would be available. Um, but it wasn't confirmed by Frank Lampard, and it could have been. Other than that, like I said, he spoke about VAR. He spoke about wanting to win the League Cup. Surprise, surprise. Um, yeah, other than that, nothing interesting was said, quite literally. Um, you know, let's just move on from, from the press conference at this point just to talk about it. So let's get into Chelsea and let's talk about how I think we should line up, how I think we will line up and how I think we should approach and will approach the game. Now, same as with Manchester United, the question is how much will we rotate? I said ahead of the Burnley game, Will we rotate against Burnley? Do we rotate against United? Do we rotate against both a little bit? We didn't rotate against Burnley. We only brought Pulis again for um for this again for, for Hudson Odoi. Um so that wasn't rotation. Now maybe we're doing rotation. I, I hope I really hope that we will rotate the team because in some positions, you know, we just need to. In other positions, we don't even have many some even not any um, options to rotate due to injuries but you know in the ones we do I do think that we do need to rotate a little bit it is the same competition but it's two different kettle of fish playing Grimsby Town and playing Manchester United so I really do hope that Lampard does rotate like I said but it is still not different so I'm not sure whether he should rotate as much as he did against Grimsby which I don't think he will but you know I guess we'll just have to wait and see because I really don't want another winter period like we had last year where we could barely buy a win for a good few weeks I don't want another you know winter period like that when we just when the players just seem absolutely knackered so let's not do that again so please I really hope that there is a little bit of rotation in there um, so my personal lineup would be this this time in an actual proper 4-2-3-1 unlike usual when I'm more of a 4-3-3 guy with a bit of a mix of a 4-2-3-1 in there. Mostly for, uh, you know, rotational purposes, not actually because I prefer the formation, because I don't. Um, but yeah, the starting goal, of course. Personally, I would actually stick with Kepa. It's Man United. Goalkeepers don't get tired. Um, so it should be fine, but I wouldn't mind if it's really Caballero either, especially if it goes to penalties. Although Kepa's actually pretty decent in penalties as well. Not always, but sometimes, I guess. With Christensen likely still being out with that hamstring, in, you know, problem injury that I mentioned, but wanted to rest at least one centre back. To me, Mark Way should start. You know, of course, he started against Grimsby Town already. Um, but I'm not sure instead of whom he should start. I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure to be honest. Like Tomori played all of our last six games. Zuma only played the last five, so rest Tomori, I guess, just for those reasons. To be honest, I don't care instead of you know whom um, of the two, I guess, Gray plays, but to me, it should be he should be playing instead of one of them at least. Fullbacks, you know, without question, have to be Reese James and Emerson. There's no two questions about it, unless that means Emerson doesn't play on Saturday against Watford and then against Ajax the next week. Um, if Emerson is in that situation, then stick with Alonso tomorrow and then play Emerson against Watford and Ajax. If it means Emerson starts tomorrow and starts against Ajax, I'm okay with that as well and play um, Alonso against Watford. But um, you know, I just need Emerson to be, you know, be fully back now, be fully fit now and start playing regularly again because it's a bit annoying. And of course, Reese James has to start because Aspie deserves and needs a break and a rest as well. Now, the double pivot in my 4-2-3-1 would be Kovacic, Mateo Kovacic and Billy Gilmer. Um, I mean, you know, Jorginho has literally played every single game for, you know, weeks, months, including Italy, um, and usually doesn't even get subbed off ever. So, you know, he really needs to rest. Kovacic, on the other hand, was out of the team for a little while, had a minor injury problem as well, but even without the injury, he wasn't always playing 
um, until a couple of weeks ago. So he stays in there for me as the senior player. And Billy Gilmer is the only other midfielder we have available um, if Ross Barkley isn't fit. And even if he is, probably rather Billy Gilmer than Ross Barkley, or just both, I guess. But, you know, we'll talk about that. And like I said, 4-2-3-1. So the three behind the striker, in my opinion, should be Hudson Odoi. He stays in there, of course, didn't start the game against Burnley. Christian Pulisic would, in my opinion, start as the 10. You know, he came on in that position against Newcastle, didn't he? And um, I don't actually want him to play as a 10 from the get-go against Man United, but for rotational purposes, because I need Mason Mount to get a rest. Hence why I am saying start Pulisic in that number in that in that number 10 role. If Barkley was fit, I probably wouldn't, and I would, you know, give Hudson another rest just to not overplay him with his injury and start Pulisic on the left and Barkley as the eight, you know, as the furthest forward of the midfield three in a 4-3-3. Three, three. Um, even though I don't rate Ross Barkley, but I would do that. But Barkley most likely isn't fit. So, you know, this is what I would go for. And then of course Pedro has to be on the right wing. I would be surprised if Pedro doesn't play and doesn't start because he hasn't been involved much recently at all. Um to me, William just deserves a rest. I mentioned Mason Mount does as well, so that's why I'm going for this. And then coming to the striker, of course, the lone striker, in my opinion, has to be Mishi by Chuaya. I swear, if either Tammy Abram or Olivier Giroud start, I'm going to be absolutely fuming. Tammy needs a rest, also hasn't been doing that well in the last two or three games. And Giroud just isn't as good as Mishi by Chuai. Proven again when he came on against uh, Burnley, because he was shocking, quite frankly, shocking. While Mishi by Chuai comes on in Amsterdam and scores the winner. Um, of course, I do know that it didn't make a difference when Giroud came on because we were 4-0 up, weren't we? So, you know, fair enough. Or was, we, was it 4-2? No, it was 4-0 at the time. So we conceded the two when Giroud was on a pitch. Must have been his fault. Obviously, I'm joking. Um, like I mentioned, you know, if the, if Barkley is fit, maybe the 4-3-3. Three, three, but I very much doubt that he is fit. Um, you know, I said what I would change to that. Um, in that sense, um, or, you know, Lampard does a lot less rotation than I actually expect. And none of Gray nor Pilligan will start. And, you know, <laughs> we basically do not have no rotation at all, uh, at all again. And... You know, what I would think of that, I don't know. If we win, you know, after the game, I would still be happy. But I'm still not sure how well that would do for us in the long run. Um, we'll just have to wait and see, I guess. Although, to be honest, now that I think of it, I'm not sure starting Gway against Manchester United, even if it's the League Cup, is the best move. So maybe I would actually still stick with Tomori and Zuma as to do centre-backs. Centre-backs don't get that tired anyway, usually. So probably should be fine. Um, but I will stick with Billy Gilmore in midfield next to Mateo Kovacic. So... I should have changed it on the screen now, so maybe I will stick to Tomori and Zuma rather than starting Gray, but we'll just have to wait and see. And the, another, the next thing I'm not 100% certain about, but is rather likely in my opinion, is that Manchester United will be you know, pretty defensive tomorrow night, and it will be down to us to break them down, a little bit like it was for Liverpool at Old Trafford a couple of weeks ago, while also making sure that they don't have us on a break and don't have us on the counter like they did to Liverpool, um, because, you know, we don't want that happening, do we now? We really don't want that happening, and I think I think we can do that. I think we can make sure they don't have us on a break while also breaking them down. I think we're more capable of that, of course, again, depending on the teams that are fielded by both managers. If we do start Gway and Gilmore and other possible youngsters as well, I don't think Ian Martin and... and um, What's the kid? I keep forgetting his name. And Und Jorin. You know, if, if he plays as well, which I very much doubt, um, then of course there would be a different story if United go with their best 11. Maybe then we'll struggle. But even then, to be honest, that would give us a chance. But, you know, that would of course change things. So everything that I say, my score predictions, my just what I expect from the game, will just strongly depends on what kind of teams um, are fielded by both managers. But um, it's just, let's just do what we always should do. And let's just do what recently we have done for a majority of a lot of the games. Move a lot. Movement is always crucial. Movement is so, so crucial. Um, pass the ball quickly, which won't be easy without Jorginho, even though Billy Gilman does actually do a decent job at that if he does start over Jorginho. Um, and Kovacic, of course, is decent at it as well. We need to be focused, 100% focused, not to be hit on the break because that, that is the thing that will hurt us. We need to work hard. You know, the intensity needs to be high. And ideally, we finish the chances that we will create because... Um, we will create chances because we're pretty good um, and especially attacking we're, we're pretty good sometimes we don't finish our chances we don't take our chances so if we do that tomorrow you know I'm, I'm very pleased because then we'll be absolutely fine unlike we were at Old Trafford when we didn't take our chances even though we didn't have that many but still plenty to you know score a, score a few I guess um, but yeah, my score prediction as the last thing I'm going to talk about is going to be a 2-1 win for Chelsea. Maybe a 1-0 win, but I'm going to go for a 2-1. Although I would also not be surprised at all if the game finished as a draw after 90 minutes, 1-0 or 0-0 even. Um, and then it's decided on penalties where personally I would actually also think that we'll win. So um, we'll have to wait and see. I am pretty confident, not hugely confident because, you know, you could see it as the title and I mentioned it. Never underestimate Man United and I'm not. Hence why I'm not overly confident in saying, oh, Man United be piss easy. It's not going to be, but I really hope that we can get revenge for that 4-0. 
at the opening day of the season. But yeah, guys, that's going to be it for me. I do hope that you enjoyed this video. I do hope that you found it informative. Um, drop a like if you did, you know, especially if you made it this far. Just go down below and smash that like button. That would be massively appreciated. Be sure to subscribe to Blues TV if you haven't already. Let's just keep it growing and growing and growing. Of course, eventually, we want to hit the 100,000 subscribers. So let's get us there slowly but surely. Um, and of course, also make sure you hit the notification bell button and choose to be notified about all uploads so you don't miss any of the future videos. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Up the chills, and I'll see you when I see you.